Welcome to Celebrating Act 2. Celebrating Act 2 is the user manual for the second half of your life. Well, hi. Thanks for joining us again on Celebrating Act 2. As you can see, Art Kirsch and I are with the fabulous Bill Jordan. Bill, good morning. Hey, guys. Are you still embracing the boom? Always. Always embracing the boom daily, hourly, and by the minute. Absolutely. God bless you. We're all baby boomers. We need to embrace it. Enjoy uh, hey, it. Hey, what else are you going to do? Yeah, Bill, um, I, you're our philosopher, okay? You think through things and then you help express them about things that we all think about and care about, but but uh, you help bring it to the fore so we can actually think about it. And one of the things that um, uh, I know that you're, you, you play with and you keep trying to improve is not getting distracted by all the noise around us. And, and you find, seems every day, a moment or three or 10, where you can really concentrate on something without being distracted by other things. And I think that's in the general world of mindfulness. Well, tell us about, if you would, uh, uh, your journey in, in concentrating on, on things one, one thing at a time. I'm just trying to get the hang of this because I always thought I was a multitasker and it's become glaringly apparent to me that I cannot multitask. I truly cannot. <clears throat> if I'm, I think I can listen to a podcast and make a list of what I need at the grocery store. I can't do it. I, I just, you know, one, I'll get one or the other. I'm not, I'm not going to get either one right. Um, and for a guy who spent 40 years in the radio business, who would get up in the morning, especially during mornings, get in the car and I got the radio cranked up or before I even left the house eating breakfast, I got the news on. I, constant sound to learn to appreciate silence and in that silence kind of look to within. So part of my Embrace the Boom notion is to improve ourselves or see our lives as a, a four-legged table, physical, mental, spiritual, and emotional. And I think the meditation and the uh, mindfulness practices help us with the spiritual and the emotional. I mean, I can do that. I told you guys before, I take my blood pressure every morning. I don't have a blood pressure problem, but it's just a habit I fell into, and now it's part of my morning ritual. If I take my blood pressure and it's elevated, say it's in the 140, sometimes 150 over 80, whatever, I can simply slow my breathing, close my eyes, slow my breathing for a minute, 90 seconds, and bring it that bring it back, bring it back down by breathing. Wow, Bre yeah. my, my, my wife will sometimes say, you sighed. What, what did you, you know, I'll be sitting over there and I'll just, <sighs> and she sees that as something wrong. What's wrong? What are you thinking about? It's, I just needed a breath. I caught myself breathing really shallow, shallowly, and I needed to take a breath. There's so much power in breathing. Inhale for four seconds, hold it for four seconds, let it out for four seconds, leave it out for four seconds. That's called box breathing. It's a great way to learn to relax. For me, you know, people think meditation and you think you're in that pose and you got your fingers and you're going, um, I think it is helpful from what I've learned on, believe it or not, just, you know, YouTube videos. I've just find some, you can call it a mantra or a word but that keeps you just focused on your breathing and and your mind. And I haven't gotten to where my mind can just stay focused that well. But when you find that you are worried about, okay, here's what I got to get done today, then you bring it back to your breathing. You've got to catch your thoughts going elsewhere and reel them back in. So you might even just go on your exhale out and on your inhale in. For me, I use more of a, a faith-based thing of on the exhale it's let go, and on my inhale, it's let God. That really, now, it's not meditative, but I'll give you this hint. It helps me is regarding sleep. I find, and i talk talking to women, and my wife is the same way, the lights go out, and their brains just start going. What they should have done today, what they did, what they should have said, what they got to do tomorrow to calm their brain. M me, if I'm sleepy, my eyes are crossing, I'm reading or something, it's time, lights are out, I go right to sleep. But I may wake up at four or five in the morning, and that's when my brain kicks in. If I stop, slow my breathing down, and focus on, again, in, out, let go, let God, I can oftentimes get myself in a state of 
such relaxation that I'm back asleep. And next thing I know, it's seven in the morning. Mm. So the meditativeness is, uh, or the mindfulness rather, is also an, as an example of, okay, you've driven to work a million times, but you've never driven to work today before. What do you notice? What can you see, you know, driving to work that you've never noticed? You know, obviously drive safely. Don't be, you know, like they do in the TV and the movies when they're talking to somebody and they don't look at the road for 30 seconds. Okay. Um, but, you know, you can no we can notice things. I talk about in my Embrace the Boom, and number one is uh, attitude of gratitude. Mm -hmm. I can go out on my back deck on a beautiful morning and I check in with each one of my senses. So what do I see? You know, I can see there's a moon, it's morning, but I can see the moon, I can see a star, I can see Venus. What can I hear? I can hear a hawk screeching overhead. What can I taste? I can, the coffee I've just poured. So you just check in with each one of your senses. And I think that will help us. You know, we go through life and it's always, don't blink. Oh, I blink. Your kid all of a sudden is 21 years old. We do blink. We can't help but blink. Yeah, but, uh, but, Bill, Bill, it's kind of interesting. Yeah. Uh, Joan and I have actually uh, touched on these conversations with other people uh, before, and, and you bring a, a nice, uh, a, a new bright light to it. But uh, somebody that both John and I know, my Tai Chi coach, uh, Vince McCullough, who uh, unfortunately recently passed, um, mm -hmm. was my Tai Chi coach and friend for 10 years. And John had the opportunity to do an interview with him, which is uh, up on our YouTube channel as well, someplace. But uh, I find that the, uh, what you're talking about, the mindfulness, of uh, concentrating, I get when I, I practice Tai Chi several times a week, and I get into some people call it a zone, but uh, you shut everything else out. And one of the things that Vince was really, really, really good at was to don't just do it in a mindless way, practice in a mindful way. And one of the phrases he used, and I think John captured it in his interview, I certainly heard it thousands of times, is that. If you're doing something, a very standard move uh, that you've done thousands of times before, his theory was you're doing this move just in this way for the first time you've ever done it in just this way in this right. moment. Right. And if you concentrate on that, because part of doing Tai Chi is not just learning movements, but getting them better and constantly working on improving them. And you'll never reach perfection, even though some people look like they're really great at it, but the really great people who practice that or any other sport are always by, by small degrees, always thinking about how do I make this even better, this form better. Golfers yeah. use the cameras to follow their golf swing. Uh, football players use to, uh, to, to follow uh, how they throw a pass, how they set their feet, this kind of thing. Even the good ones, and especially the good ones, even pay attention to the minor details of something they do magnificently well to get it even better. John, do you remember uh, 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 that interview with Vince? Did you get that uh, sense from him uh, oh, about yeah, absolutely. always being in the moment? He, he, yeah, he was. Um, he had started as a football coach and yeah. ended up teaching his football players Tai Chi and, and ended up as in later life teaching Tai Chi uh, and becoming a master and all that. Uh, he was He was a philosopher as much as a exercise mm -hmm. coach, if you will. Yeah. Um, I, but as you guys were talking, I, I thought of something else, and that is uh, the idea of mindfulness and meditation um, is really not a foreign uh, concept to most people. Think about this. I, I'm, I've, over the years, I've met hundreds of people who are hobbyists, and their hobbies are, you know, vary from crocheting to uh, model trains to uh, rebuilding a car in the garage. And one of the things that I've found about all these hobbyists is that they, without realizing it, they're practicing mindfulness and a form of meditation when they start engaging in their hobby. Yep. Um, so you've had a rough day, you go into the garage and you start sanding uh, the carburetor down uh, for your hot rod or whatever it is. And it's, it's not mindlessness, you're concentrating on doing something and you have the opportunity when you do your hobby to put all this other stuff out of your life 
for just a few minutes. And and Bill, I I love the way you have presented the mindlessness, mindfulness, and meditation, uh, along with the breathing, by the way, which is yeah. Try that, try that breathing is is pretty amazing. And and something else to note, you know, you don't need to go into a dark room for thirty minutes or whatever. Even though there is a famous statement about if you do not have time to meditate for thirty minutes, meditate for an hour. If you're if you're basically if you are so your life is so helter skelter busy, yeah, that you don't have time for it, then you really need it. But you can take little moments through your day when you're stopped at the stoplight. You can just slow your breathing. Be mindful of how is your breath. Where do you hold your stress? I was just talking to a friend of mine, um, you know, the other, the other day, and I said, "Where do you hold your stress?" He says, "Lately, it's been around my waist, meaning you're stress eating." But I said, "No, like." For me, it's my jawline, it's my hands, I'll find them clenched, or my neck. If I'm stressed, when I wake up at those 4 and 5 a.m.s, I'll find that I'm, I'm not even resting into the pillow. I'm almost holding my head up off the pillow. Yeah. So as I breathe and exhale, I feel like I'm just almost deflating into the mattress. Now, you don't want to try that maybe while you're in traffic, but you can definitely slow your breathing, you know, turn the sound off, turn the music off, or talk show, whatever you're listening to, and just drive in silence sometime. You know, just drive in silence. It, it yeah. really is amazing to me. I've been in the house sometimes where all I can hear is the refrigerator hum. It's almost deafening. Yeah. It's, it's wild. I love it. For a guy who, again, started every day for years with sound. And my job was, I had headphones on for four hours a day, at least. Now to just have silence, you know. Hey, that oldie was true. Silence is golden. Yeah, yeah. Uh, great, uh, uh, great advice. A wonderful video. Uh, and very helpful, I think, to, uh, to well, most people. Well, I need people. to get more into it. I've just kind of started dabbling in it. But the first time I, I set my timer on my phone for 20 minutes, to just do the breathing and the let go, let God, and really just kept trying to reel my, as my thoughts started to spin away with the monkey mind, they call it, you know, doing its own thing and reeling it back in and getting it back on to let go, let God. Bing, 20 minutes was gone. Yeah. And I just was calm. You know, think of well, the all stress we're under, and then self induced stress, certainly, but stress from elsewhere. I mean, we've got lives, we've got families and friends and jobs and whatever else. And this stress, and I really think the meditation and the mindfulness is a great combat to stress. Stress is a killer, believe me. Yeah. The cortisol and everything it kicks up in your in your body. It's 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 dangerous stuff. So if it can ward off stress, I'm all for it. Well, that's all part of embracing the boom, isn't it? Mm. Is it certainly is. Is doing the right thing and enjoying life at any age, but particularly if you're a baby boomer. And having the time not to do things. Yeah, put the and put the cell phone down. You know, go to your settings on your phone. You will be amazed at the number of times you yeah. pick up that phone every day or how often you are on social media. When you get a yeah. load of that, man, you try to dial that back and that'll ease your stress too. Yeah, I, actually, that's, that's a really good point. Uh, some people uh, uh, complain to me from time to time that, well, you don't pick up the phone when I call because we've all cut our uh, the landlines from our house, so we only have our cell phones. But uh, I have my cell phone in my office and I do a lot of work, a lot of editing, a lot of other things during the day, recording these interviews. And what I do is I don't I don't leave the ringer on unless I know something uh, I'm waiting because of be hearing about to somebody in the hospital or something. But generally speaking, uh, I leave the phone in the room. I never look at the phone generally after six or seven at night. Maybe when I shut off the computer, I see if I have messages, but I never take it into the bedroom. I right. stop doing that. You know, this right. is an emergency that I know I have to pay attention to. Uh, right. And uh, so somebody say, you know, I tried to reach you last night. Okay. Well, you know, if it's that important <laughs> and, right. you're, and you're close enough, you have my wife's number because she keeps her phone around. Right. Exactly. We're the same <laughs> way. Same way. Mm -hmm. So this is really great. As always, uh, really great advice for people to pay attention to. I wonder whether or not just watching... Uh, the uh, uh, these episodes with Bill Jordan is something that 
you can shut everything else out and then just embrace the three of us, particularly Bill Jordan, shut everything else out in the world and make it a very calming time. That's another one of my practices. Calm is contagious, my friend. Calm is contagious. Oh, stop that because I can only take one at a time. Ah, it's just, uh, they just flow into one another. Ebb and flow. Thank you, Bill. Thanks, guys. Thanks for having me. See you soon. For more on Celebrating Act Two, visit our webpage, follow us on Facebook, subscribe to us on YouTube, and tell your friends. Celebrating Act Two is the user manual for the second half of your life.